and I'm Mrs. Deepa who will be handling this year social science for you. Apart from history, remaining other five parts will be handled by me. So there are 39 chapters in social science and today I have come up with the most important lesson that is the problems of India and their solutions. See, when we speak about problem, is India facing a problem? Yes, India is facing a problem. What is the problem presently India is facing? The most important problem that India is facing today is not only India, the entire world is facing the problem of pandemic or the COVID-19 that has affected the entire world. So especially India is facing a problem like we can say our GDP has come down. There is slow economic progress. Income of the people has gone down. Standard of living has completely come down. Plus we are in the scourge of facing unemployment, poverty, etc. So during 1947 also, India faced numerous problems internally as well as externally. So these problems, both internally and externally, whatever problems we were facing, we could have solved those problems if there was, point number one is, if there was an efficient administration. So through the efficient administration, we would have solved this problem. And the second point that we could say is, not only efficient administration, even we also need the support of citizens. Support of citizen can also be considered as one of the measure where we can solve these problems. So whatever problems we were facing and presently whatever we are facing, the COVID-19, whatever we are facing, that can be solved only with efficient administration as well as through the support of the citizens, we would have solved this problem. So in this, can it be solved? So let's discuss about how these problems can be solved during the national emergencies. So these problems are human made problems. So as it is human made problems, through a human solution itself, we can find the solution for these problems. So some of the solutions that we can say is through proper administration, one thing. Second thing we can say is through social reformation, through social reformation. Third thing we can say through social reformation as well as through efficient administration, efficient government and uh, support of the people, these and all can make to some extent to solve these problems. So the first and the major problem we can discuss today. So we can discuss today's one of the such major problem which you have been learning from your class, primary classes onwards. So from primary classes onwards, you are aware of this problem. And one such problem we can discuss today is unemployment. Unemployment. What is unemployment? Unemployment is a situation where a person has all the capacity to work, but he is not able to seek a job. So as he is not able to seek a job, that situation can be called as unemployment. So he has all the quality, he has all the capacity, but even though he possesses all the quality as well as all the capacity, then too he is not able to seek a job according to his qualification. And that situation can be called as unemployment. Okay. So what is unemployment? Unemployment is a situation where a person has all the capacity to do the work even though he has all the capacity to do the work yet he is not able to get a job of his desired level 
and that situation or we can say according to his uh, qualification he is not able to get a job and that situation can be called as unemployment for example we can say that is we see so many people like that in our various walks of life example uh, i can say that a pizza delivery boy or a courier delivery boy who is coming as a delivery boy to your home may not be doing the job according to his qualification he can be highly qualified but what is making him to do that job is the reason is unemployment not only unemployment even poverty is also forcing people to do any sort of work to overcome the problem of unemployment so here we could say that according to 2011 census report so according to 2011 census report the poverty level of india was 21.9 percentage 21.9 percentage was the level of poverty during the 2011 census report from this what we can understand poverty is also considered as one of the reason which is making people instead of being unemployed they will opt for the job that they are getting so to overcome the poverty and to overcome the problem of unemployment people engage in various occupation so even though they have all the qualification they are not able to seek a job and that situation can be called as a unemployment now let's move to the uh, that is uh, let's say there are so many measures taken by the government to solve the problem of unemployment so in that first one the first measure that we could discuss the first measure is improve the skill level improve the skill level of the job seekers so those who are willing to take up the job improve their skill level improve their efficiency so by improving their efficiency we can overcome the problem of unemployment the second one is providing them with some of the loans and subsidies providing them with loans and subsidies the people whoever is willing to take up the self employment so those who are willing to take up the self employment those people can be provided with loans and subsidies at a very low rate of interest then the third thing what we can say is that is uh, handicraft industries should be encouraged so we have to encourage the handicraft industries which is unable to compete with the goods that is created by the globalized market so whatever globalized market are producing indian industries should be able to cope up with the global market to uh, at the global production level so we have to improve the skill and those who are uh, willing to take up a professional job what we have to do we have to help them for taking up job oriented courses we have to help them to take up the job oriented courses so this and all can be considered as some of the measures for unemployment to overcome the problem of unemployment we can consider this as the sum of the measure plus we can say that every citizen should be encouraged to indulge in two or more occupation it doesn't mean that the farmer who is dependent on agriculture he can undertake even the cottage industries also so in this way people should be encouraged to take up two or one or two occupation and that also to some level tackle the problem of unemployment 
so here we have discussed what is the meaning of unemployment so what is the meaning it is nothing but where a person is unable to get the job according to his qualification or his capacity can be called as unemployment so mm -hmm. here i have discussed some of the measure improve the skill level uh, loans and subsidies should be provided job oriented courses has to be encouraged and we have to encourage the handicraft handicraft products that is created so uh, they are uh, as they are unable to compete with the goods in the global market we have to make these handicrafts to compete with the uh, global market so through that to some level we can avoid the ruining of cottage and handicrafts industries so moving on to the next concept let's understand the next concept and the next concept what we are going to cover today is corruption this corruption it has spreaded like a cancer in every walks of life in every walks of life we can see this corruption it's not only in one part of india but it is seen throughout the country so corruption is considered as another social evil that is taking place in the public sphere so in public sphere it is spreading like a cancer throughout the country so what is this corruption corruption is nothing but if i want my work to be done from a government official i will try to bribe him so why am i trying to bribe him so that through the illegal means i can get my work done okay illegally i am trying to bribe a government official so here uh, corruption is another illegal means to achieve for the personal gains and that can be called as corruption so this corruption it stays away from legal framework in uh, that is it stays away from legal framework why it is staying away from the legal framework is because here the people indulge in for their own personal gains if i am bribing a government official means i am bribing him because the reason is i am trying to get my work done illegally as i am trying to get my work done illegally i am trying to bribe the government official and that is one way how you can say it is considered as corruption so this corruption it is becoming like a contagious disease so it is becoming like a contagious disease in everyday life so here we can expect one question that is corruption influences negatively in both personal as well as in public sphere i repeat corruption influences negatively in both personal as well as public sphere how so in that first point what we can write let us say it is an justifying question so we have to justify it based on the points whatever we have so in that the first justification point what i can say is it is influencing the economic social and political life of the people negatively it is this corruption is influencing the political economic and social life of the people negatively that can be considered as the point number 1 so for the question that is corruption influences negatively in both personal and public sphere of life do you agree with this statement or justify your statement for that point number 1 is that is the economic social and the political life of the people is uh, that is affected negatively second point what can we say the second point is it is a immoral thing it is leading to an immoral thing 
how it is leading to an immoral thing is see it is against the personal ethics it is against our moral values we all know that if i am bribing a police officer i know it is legally it is wrong but i know it is wrong even though i know it is wrong i am trying to bribe that government official why so i am doing it against my personal and the moral ethics i am going against my personal and the moral ethics so this corruption is forcing me to go against my personal value as well as my moral ethics now the next thing this corruption can take place in different forms in different forms it can take place so one we can say corruption takes the form of nepotism okay then first it is uh, taking the form of nepotism then it can also lead to caste favoritism corruption can lead to nepotism it can lead to ca uh, caste uh, favoritism as well as it can also lead to intentional slow down of work intentional slow down of work if i am not bribed then what i will do purposefully i'll try to slow down the work of that person so these are different forms of corruption so here it can it is against my personal ethics it is against my moral ethics it is negatively affecting the social economic and the political spheres plus this corruption it takes different forms so it is taking different forms like it is taking the form of nepotism caste favoritism intention and slow down of work etc these all can be considered as some of the different forms of corruption so these all are some of the evil practices so these evil practices is uh, against corruption so these all are some of the evil practices that is occurring due to corruption so that is one question what i have discussed and the second question what can be an application type of question is that is political corruption leads to crime political corruption leads to crime how or how political corruption can lead to crime so here political corruption in the sense that is it is uh, providing a motivation in the public sphere we are providing a motivation in the public uh, life and we are helping for the nourishment of the mal administration in the political sphere okay so political uh, corruption leads to crime how so in that the first point is we can say that it is providing motivation okay it is providing motivation in public life and it is nourishing for the mal administration mal administration on the part of the political life and not only that one we are illegally hoarding we are smuggling it is leading to economic issues violation of international exchanges even employment so these all are giving space for corruption okay cheating all those things are uh, giving chance for corruption so this is how political corruption is leading to crime so how it is leading to crime is because it is helping for the mal administration it is nourishing for the mal administration not only it is nourishing for the mal administration but it is also Uh, we can say that it is leading to the hoarding of goods then we can say smuggling then we can say economic issues cheating violation of international exchanges etc it is leading to all these problems so it is impossible to deprove this corruption 
yet we have taken so many measures see until if i decide i don't bribe the government official like that it is not only through efficient administration we can tackle this corruption it is the responsibility of each and every citizen each and every citizen should have the moral ethics in his mind that he is not going to bribe so we should have the moral ethics we should have the uh, that is um, ethics that i am not going to bribe so we should have strong ethics morality and personal commitment and this can to some extent stop the corruption so the measures taken to tackle this corruption is installing of cctv cameras installing of cctv cameras in offices so that they'll come to know whether the government officials are doing it or not we have ample of people like kala hazare and so many people who have raised their voice against corruption we should not think that it is not our responsibility to put an end for this evil it is also our prime responsibility when we join the hands together only we can tackle this problem until and unless there is no collective effort all the efforts of the government to tackle this problem will be in a soup and the government even though they have established the lokayukta lokpal etc like this so many other institutions are established and we have the movements that has been uh, that is anna hazare he has started a movement itself against corruption so such voices can help to some level to tackle the problem of corruption